archivist, y'all, exclusively interviewing Brother Ernie Panicoli. Peace. And who is the world-class hip-hop ambassador, Zulu King, premier photographer, Brother Ernie Panicoli? I'm the man that someone else has to define because I don't define myself. I define my work, I define my art, I define my contribution, but who I am as a man, other people have to tell me what their reactions are. And from the birthplace of hip-hop, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, can you share on the inspiration that motivated yourself to capture your photographs, being many favorites, onto the next one? My favorite hip-hop photograph is the next one that I shoot. And on to many incredible times in NYC, can you tell us more about Divine Sounds and the block parties with Zulu Nation and your 35mm camera? In my book, Who Shot You, there's a picture of Divine Sounds. They're standing on a flatbed truck. They got on some, uh, looks like high school shiny jackets, old sneakers, and, you know, just floppy pants, man, from, you know, a sweatsuit. That was before the days of million dollar this and everybody having 20 publicists and six bodyguards. They just brought real hip hop to real people doing real things. And that's the most important photograph in Who Shot You is the picture that I took. I was standing behind them, leaning up over the edge of the truck and I have them, I have the two microphones and I have the audience of the South Bronx. And to me that's the most important picture because it's the most natural. And many people would love to know more about Brother Smitty, Ralph McDaniels, Henry Chalifant, Jamel Shabazz, and Brother James. Wow. Jamel Shabazz is best known for his book, Back in the Days. Jamel Shabazz is one of those brothers that, like myself, went around and just documented the world around him. He wasn't paid, nobody cared, nobody, you know, he didn't have publicists and bodyguards and people giving him assignment money. He just went and he documented our streets. Ralph McDaniels was the first person on the planet to uh, show rap videos on his show. He's also a brother, he's still doing it. I love him with all my heart. And Brother Smitty? Brother Smitty was uh, one of the leaders of the Black Panther Party, the original Black Panther Party, and he passed away from cancer two years ago, and I miss him terribly. But his picture, I have a picture of him with a painting by Emery Douglas, who did all the pictures for the Black Panthers. He did all the pictures, all the posters, and one of the posters was Smitty when he was a young man holding a shotgun. And just before he passed, I took a picture of him at 75 years old with a picture of him when he was 25 years old. And Smitty used to walk around with two hand grenades, and his remark was very simple. If the pigs stop me, I got a surprise for their asses. And Jam Master J, brother Jason, my Zells, uh, I never shook his hand. Anytime I ever saw him, all I ever got from him was a hug, or maybe two, and all I ever got from him was a smile. Uh, I don't think I ever got a frown, and I miss him, man. I miss all the brothers that left us too early. But they had a job to do, they came and they left. And I love Jay, everybody loves Jay, and that's why it's sad that he's gone, but he left children and he left a powerful legacy and left a good memory man everybody loved him and the sixth element is ernie panicoli the archivist of urban emotion before any big budget videos can you share on some of your favorite moments from rolling stone new york times source and double xl and in the urban museum with over 110 pieces in an exhibit that exhibit was called 110 shots to the dome and it was put out just before my book, Who Shot You, came out, there was a cold, freezing night in November in New York City by the South Street Seaport. And we were hoping to get maybe 150 people to come so that we'd have more people in pictures. That first night, we had 3,000 people come out. And not only did 3,000 people come out, but 3,000 people didn't want to leave. They dug the music, they dug the pictures, and it was a powerful, powerful night. Uh, other great moments was me sitting in Biggie's car and asking him about Tupac and what that whole thing was. Tupac had just been killed and Biggie told me he had no beef with Tupac, that that whole thing was hype, done by hyperholics like 
you know, the media, Vibe magazine, everybody was trying to drumbeat. Oh, East Coast, West Coast. East Coast and West Coast were producing each other's music. There was no beef. That was uh, Fluffy, I mean Puffy and uh, Suge Knight. And unfortunately, Biggie and Tupac were killed in the middle of that. But he told me himself, and he told me something else, and I'm going to repeat it verbatim. He said, if Tupac had lived, me and that nigga would have been making music together because alone nobody could touch us, and together nobody on the planet could touch us. That's from Big. You heard it here, live and direct. In the Roxy Club, graffiti history and featured in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Roots Rage Rhymes back in 1999. And a quote from Charlie Ahern of Wild Style, he says, truly the master photographer of hip hop. Wow. Charlie did Wild Style, Henry Chalfant did Style Wars, Martha Cooper worked with him. These are the people who, without them, most of the train images would never have been done. Without Charlie Ahern, I think maybe 80% of the people, young people around the world that heard about hip hop would not have heard about hip hop. So for these brothers and sisters to show me love is such a thrill, man. It tickles me because these are the cats who actually broke it out to the world. And uh, I love them. Charlie and I, well, one thing, I, I got one beef with Charlie Ahern and you're gonna get an exclusive. Listen, man, you promised me lunch and dinner. I've been waiting out for two years. You got my number and I got your number on speed dial. You better call me and I better get that dinner or that lunch. I love you, Charlie. I love you, Henry. Martha, you're my girl and don't never change. But I better get that dinner, baby. And capturing photos since the early 80s, since Cool Herc, Africa Bombada, Curtis Blow, to Run DMC, to Public Enemy, Cold Crush Brothers, Roxanne Shante, Salt and Peppa, the legendary Rakim, so many more. One of your most epic photo shoots that you could share with us. The next one. No, there's so many. I, I can't even pick one that I really love. I mean, there were so many. Two shoots really stand out in my mind. Aaliyah because I photographed her on, my, on her 16th birthday. And I have that picture at the last picture in my book, Who Shot You? And uh, Aaliyah, I did the last photo session with Big Pun at Sony Studios. His wife and his kids were there. And we were sitting around eating turkey sandwiches and laughing and, you know, two days later he was gone. And uh, that hurts, but I remember that. I remember that Public Enemy treated me like the fourth member or fifth member of the group. I remember Terror Squad with Fat Joe and Big Pun treated me like family. Biggie, who was so beautiful, man. You know, people really had a misconception about him being, you know, this and that. It wasn't. If he didn't like you, that was too bad. If he liked you, man, he was the best person in the world around you. I remember just so many beautiful people sharing so much time with me, man. And you have to understand, a photo shoot is not just a photographer and a camera, but it's a whole group of people. It's the stylist, it's the hair, it's the makeup. It's my, you know, the brothers that are working with me to do the lighting, my assistants. The people who develop and process the films and the slides. The people, you know, put them in the magazine, the magazines that pay me the fans who go out and buy the magazines that my work is in. Okay, the people, the kids, what I used to do, and I'm giving you an exclusive here, what I used to do with everybody, all my friends, if they had kids, I'd go to their house, and I'd say, let me go to your kid's bedroom, and I'd go to the kid's bedroom, and whoever was on the wall, I knew was hot. If they were on the kid's bedroom, I knew who was hot. It didn't matter what the magazine said, or Billboard said, or what MTV said, it was what was on the kid's wall that was hot. And it felt so great, man, for so many years to go in the kids' bedrooms and see my posters of people constantly on the wall. That's a thrill. That's more important than being in a friggin' museum or, or any of that stuff. That was a thrill. That was like, whoa. Because if you're on a kid's wall, your poster's on a kid's wall. That means you look, you're official. And taking pictures for Yo! MTV Raps, the card collection. Very monumental. Yeah, that was monumental. And at that time, hip-hop really wasn't the global phenomenon it is now. 
it really wasn't. So uh, they were really ahead of their time. And the largest crowd or the best tour you've been part of? Probably the tour with Tupac, Digital Underground, Kid and Play, Heavy D and the Boys, and Public Enemy. And uh, I remember I shot that in, I think it was Williamsburg, Virginia. That was powerful. And one of your best hip hop memories you've been part of or contributed to? Being the keynote speaker for the Temple of Hip Hop at the United Nations. That was, that was mind boggling for me to be there with my daughter at the United Nations. That was powerful. And anything to say? Purchase your books and videos, where to get them? My books are at www.lulu.com and I have a book on graffiti to call, they call it graffiti. I have one on punk called Punk Life. I have two amazing books. One is called The Truth, another is called Deeper. And I have a book that would blow everybody's mind that I did in 1967 through 1974 called A Series of Dreams. Bob Dylan gave me that name for the book, A Series of Dreams. you have anything to say to Canada? Bring me back, man. And you have the most pretty, you have the hottest women in the world. They're all beautiful. They're all beautiful. I feel like I'm in the village of, I feel like I'm in a tribe of pretty women. And you have any shouts? Yeah, I want to shout out this media festival. And uh, OS12 who brought me up here. Uh, the graffiti artist, Girl 23. Her, she, Girl 23. I'm trying to make a poem, but my rapping ain't working. And, uh, you know, just the whole energy. And I have to say something about you. You did your homework. You ain't asking me what my favorite color is or what I think of... Uh, you know, Little Wayne's drawers hanging out, or you know, the new tattoo Drake got on his uh, on his nose. You know, you're, you're asking relevant questions, so that's cool. And for all you fans out there, let me tell you something: sagging is nigger spelled backwards. DJ Green Arrow, thank you, brother, for the love. Africa and Bambada and the Universal Zulu Nation anniversary. I don't have to tell you. KRS One, I don't have to tell you about the love. Chuck D, I definitely don't have to tell you about the love. And shouts to Irwin, Oz12, Girl23, and this is the Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. Keep the flame burning, baby. Peace. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, well, I'll just retire first. Let, let, it, let it speak for itself.